What's the point of having long hair if I'm just gonna wear it up all the time? That is so pointless. Like seriously, what's the point? Have you ever had someone ask you a question somewhat critically and you just simply didn't know how to answer it? Maybe because you could feel simply from the question itself that this person had layers of different beliefs and different outlooks that got between you and your ability to just clearly answer their question. Yeah, we've all been there. And in this video, I'm going to be addressing this one nagging question that I have frankly just been putting off answering for as long as I received it. In fact, I have never publicly answered this question before. A big part of that is because I knew I would need at least a whole video to address it properly. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Why go to all the work of growing long hair if you're just going to put it up and hide it away every day? There's actually a lot there, believe it or not, because there are frankly just so many assumptions and differing worldviews built into that question that we're gonna need to take some time to like unpack each, each of those assumptions and worldviews before I can actually get around to answering the question in my own way. So if you don't know what these people asking this question, and maybe you yourself have asked this question from watching my videos, what they are reacting to is a concept that I have expressed in many of my videos about my hair care routine, which is that I highly recommend the use of regular protective styling of the hair, which means tucking the hair up and away with your ends tucked away and your hair usually up and off your body for most days, in fact. That's what I do with my own hair. And so people, Relatively naturally, I would say this isn't an unnatural question by any means, but they naturally ask the question, well, what's the point of having long hair if you're going to wear it up all the time? I tend to think very philosophically. In fact, I've been coming to realize more and more that my brain simply doesn't work the same way as many people around me. And so I feel like I can't even address the more practical elements of this question without first addressing like the assumptions that are built into this, likely unbeknownst to the asker. So before we jump into it, let's just elaborate on that one point I just mentioned, which is that I've been realizing more and more that my brain just doesn't necessarily work the same way that other people's brains do. And I'm just embracing that more and more as time goes on. I'm just kind of weird. And one of my weirdnesses is that I love and have always loved learning new skills and just really doing a deep dive into learning everything I can about certain skills or certain topics. And that's why I love online learning platforms like Skillshare. I have always loved making things with my hands for as long as I can remember. And I think this will always be a part of who I am for as long as I have working hands. In fact, lately my kids and I have actually been taking a Skillshare class about how to make your own beautiful marionette puppets. I have always loved doll making and my kids all do as well. So this has been really fun for us to watch together. Skillshare has very approachable, very easy to complete online classes on a myriad of different topics, like pretty much whatever creative topic or even non-creative topic you want to learn more about, they likely have a class for you on Skillshare. Whatever you want to learn, be it sewing, drawing, knitting, fine art, sculpture, videography, photography, or entrepreneurial skills. They have so many classes for you and it's a great way to expand your creative journey as a human being. Not sure where to start? Skillshare has designed something called Learning Paths to easily compile a pathway of different videos to help you progress from total beginner to pro in a short period of time. Are you ready to dive in? The first 500 people to use my link will receive their first month of Skillshare membership for free. This is a wonderful opportunity to try out a Skillshare membership and I really, really recommend it. Skillshare is frankly one of the best investments you can make on your journey to growing and learning as a human being in this life. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get back into addressing this nagging question that I have received fairly often, which is, what's the point of having long hair if you're just going to wear it up all the time? So firstly, I guess one of the reasons why this question rubs me the wrong way is because it's implying that there is not a point to it simply because the asker of the question doesn't understand the point. But I mean, obviously, I believe that there's a point to my having long hair, even if I'm going to wear it up all the time, simply evidenced by the fact that I do indeed have long hair that I choose to wear up on most days. I am a busy mom of five, and frankly, even if my hair was just shoulder length, I would still be likely wearing it up most days. 
So it's not really relevant which length my hair is, but I have come to realize that protective styles are very important for me in actually being able to grow my hair as long as I have. But more on those practical points later. First, we need to address the main, like big, big assumption that is built into the asking of this question. And in fact, this is a very meaty topic that I think is important for everyone to think about who wants to improve the health of their hair. So this assumption is that the main purpose of hair is merely to impress other people around us. And this is a big one. Like, just take that in again. Is the main purpose of your hair looking the way it does merely to impress other people, like a mere kind of cosmetic appendage? Or is it an intrinsic part of who we are as human beings? Is it an extension of ourselves that we care for and nurture because we care for and nurture ourselves at the same time? This is a huge one for me. And frankly, if I think about it, this is the one huge belief shift that really underlay most of my moving into my current way of caring for my hair compared to how I used to care for my hair before, which was again, simply viewing it as something that I had to force into submission because it needed to fit a particular mold of how society thought hair should look, especially curly hair like mine and spending all sorts of money and doing all sorts of frankly, somewhat damaging things to my hair in order to force it to conform to this societal image because I viewed hair as simply a cosmetic appendage Versus now, I view my hair as an extension of myself and something that I care for and nurture and I personally choose to grow long because that's what suits me, that's what fills my heart with joy, and that's all there is to it, really. So again, I choose to have my own hair grow long for many reasons, probably 99% of which have nothing to do with what others think of me or with trying to impress other people, as evidenced by the fact that I do indeed wear my hair up on most days. And if you didn't know me and you saw me with my hair up, you might not be able to tell that my hair is so long as it is. And that's completely fine with me. I am just so past the idea of only having hair and having my hair look a certain way in order to only impress other people. I'm more about having my hair be the way I want it to be, whether or not I constantly broadcast that to everyone who happens to see me during the day. Okay, so I'd like to elaborate on something I already touched on, which is more of the like mainstream modern view of hair, at least here in the West versus the main historical view is, as I understand it, of hair. And I already touched on it, which is that, is hair simply a cosmetic appendage that we do all sorts of things to, to force to conform to a societal image, or is it ultimately an extension of ourselves? I'm hugely oversimplifying this here. It's not quite so black and white as to say that in history, they only viewed hair this way, and in the modern day, we only view hair this way. It's not at all that simple by any means, but I am still going to make this generalization because I think it generally rings true, at least in certain cultures throughout history, that they often did view hair as an extension of oneself, something to be cared and nurtured gently. Some cultures view the hair actually as an extension of one's nervous system. And in fact, these cultures still exist today, certain religions as well. Whereas I would hazard a generalization that in the modern day, especially at least here in the West, Hair tends to be viewed merely as something that we, we chemically treat and we fry with heat and we brush roughly and we apply all sorts of goopy chemical solutions to, to force it to conform to a certain appearance. And that is usually our main goal. And we don't tend to view hair so much as an extension of ourselves and something to be treated gently. So interestingly enough, in some cultures in history, and again, these cultures and or religions still mostly exist to this day, their view of hair being an extension of oneself and something to be cared and nurtured actually went hand in hand with a belief in the importance of keeping hair private only for oneself or one's close loved ones. Again, as opposed to the modern Western belief that not only is hair a mere cosmetic appendage, but it should be broadcasted publicly as much as possible in the sense that if you have long hair, you should be wearing that hair loose all the time. And if you're not, it means you're just having a bad hair day you know, or you're just super frazzled and that's why we put our hair up. Whereas historically, women would either wear their hair up in a nice style daily or in certain cultures, they would actually cover their hair all the time. They still had long hair. So I guess all that to say that just because people asking this question clearly don't see the point of it, doesn't mean that other people and other viewpoints don't see the point. Myself and many, many people throughout history 
being examples of that. Something that I like to look into more is, again, analyzing why certain cultures might have worn their hair up or kept it covered, which, again, could have gone hand in hand with their belief that hair was an extension of oneself or an extension of one's nervous system. Because if you think about it, if you have long hair and it's an extension of your nervous system, you don't necessarily want to have that just out and floating around all the time, picking up on other people's negative energy. Likely you'll want to kind of keep it up and tucked away and therefore keep yourself more like protected and, and shielded, I guess, in a way. I just love thinking about other cultures' beliefs in this way. I think it's fascinating to me. Totally get it if you're not there though. I will also say that throughout many cultures, and again to this day, there were viewpoints that hair, especially on women, represented one's sensuality, one's femininity, one's sort of like wildness. And therefore that was another reason why they would have, once they reached a certain age, either kept it covered entirely or kept it up in some kind of updo. And again, I just find this fascinating because it seconds the belief system I think I do subconsciously have without necessarily articulating it to myself that hair is a valuable part of ourselves. Like growing long hair can be a very valuable part of ourselves whether or not we choose to wear it loose all the time. And coming to this belief in myself has been definitely a very important step in me getting to the point where I'm at in my hair growth journey because I think a lot of people who grow their hair out simply with the aim of, you know, impressing other people with how long their hair is and therefore wearing it loose every day will get to a point where their hair simply gets too long for it to be practical to be wearing it loose every day and so they just end up cutting it because it's too much work. I would have definitely come to that point years ago if I hadn't given myself the permission that, hey, it's okay to have long hair but still wear it up every day or most days. Interestingly enough, total side note, this actually goes hand in hand with a shift in belief systems in how we actually view our bodies, especially as women in the modern West versus historically. Historically, the body was often viewed as something to be not shown off through form-fitting clothing, but shielded. So even in the era of corsets, which lasted for about 400 years, you could argue like, oh, well, they were showing off their bodies then. And in a way you could say that, yes, they were. But on the other hand, the corset acted as a shield or an armor, actually hiding the natural shape of the body, forming it into this other shape. And then the clothing on the outside was probably form-fitting, but it was form-fitting to the corset, not to the body itself. And the naked body itself, the shape of the natural body itself, was usually considered to be very private, which is why corsets were the norm in these time periods and these cultures. Whereas in the modern day, we've gotten away from that. So now all of our clothing, it might not even necessarily be as form-fitting as in the corset era, for example, but it's all about conforming to the natural shape of the body itself, which is completely fine. And I think there's lots of pros to that view as well, meaning that you know, you're not wearing a stiff structured garment all the time and most people aren't comfortable with that anymore. But it does mean that there's therefore nothing between you and society's beauty standards, meaning that now instead of getting a corset to help them achieve the fashionable body shape, people are resorting to extreme dieting or extreme working out, or in the most extreme cases, they're actually getting surgery to augment their body and create curves where there were none or slim things down where it wasn't so slim. I just think it's so fascinating to look at how different cultures looked at these things and the pros and cons of each because no, no viewpoint, no way of looking at ourselves is perfect. There's always pros and cons. And I think we in the modern period tend to always think that we've got it all figured out and in history they didn't. When in reality, we're kind of ignoring the dark side of our own way of doing things. Anyway, that was a total rabbit trail. You can tell where my passion lies. I love talking about historical fashion and corsets and, and hair. So let's anyway get back into the practical answers to this question now that we've kind of covered the underlying assumptions and worldviews built into the asking of this question. What's the point of having long hair if you wear it up all the time? So my practical answers now that I've covered all of that is that number one, I have a very busy life. I have five children. I have curly hair that gets tangled easily. And therefore it's simply the most practical thing for me to wear it up all the time. And again, I would be wearing it up most days even if my hair was shoulder length. However, I am more fastidious about wearing my hair up in certain styles and doing certain things with it because I do have a goal of growing long hair and protective styles have been very important for me in growing my hair to the length it has through 
preventing breakage and keeping the ends protected. And if you'd like to learn more about protective styles, I have two videos on this channel all about them, which will be linked for you in the description. Now, second important point is that I don't wear my hair up all the time. So whenever people ask this question, they're generalizing. You wear your hair up all the time. What's the point of having long hair? Well, the answer is that I actually don't wear my hair up all the time. I wear my hair up most of the time. And there's a big difference there, of course. And again, a very important nuance here is that I am the one who decides when I'm going to wear my hair up or when I'm going to wear my hair down. And so the beautiful thing about having long hair is that if I want, I can put it up and kind of forget that it's there and go about my life as if I have short hair. Or I have the option of wearing it loose and having that, you know, mermaid hair and that nice princess feeling to me that my long hair gives me. But again, I have the option. Whereas if my hair was shorter, I wouldn't have that option unless I just put on a wig, which is fine too, of course. Lastly, again, there's the important point, which I already mentioned, which is that I wear my hair up all the time. Also, because if I hadn't, I probably wouldn't have been able to grow my hair to the length that I now have. Because in the past, for example, when I was doing the curly girl method of caring for my hair, I did wear my hair loose most days. That was my norm. And I had a lot of damage to my ends and my hair consistently would break off at a certain point, which is why it never appeared to grow past a certain point on my body. Because of a lot of things, but probably one of the factors was that I never put my hair up in protective styles. Before we finish up, I just wanted to introduce you to this beautiful handmade Waldorf doll that was made for me by the wonderful Sarah of Tiny Stitch Studios. She makes all handmade dolls using only natural materials. Her work is largely inspired by celebrating simple living, living in harmony with nature, and living sustainably. And who doesn't love any of those things? She made this lovely handmade natural fiber doll for me for my daughter Leia actually custom made and I could not recommend her work more. Please check her out at tinystitchstudios.com, which will be linked for you in the description. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And I realize that this is somewhat more like philosophical content that not everyone will be interested in. So if you watch all the way to the end, I really appreciate you listening to me ramble in this way. If you have not yet subscribed and hit the notifications bell, definitely do so because I have a few exciting announcements kind of brewing here in the future. And in fact, I did just make an important announcement a couple weeks ago, which is that I am launching one-on-one -on -one hair care consultations just until the end of February. This is kind of like a trial run. So if there are any slots left at the time this video is published, then you can sign up for that in the link in the description. If you appreciate the content I bring to you about hair care and about sewing, and you would like to thank me in a monetary way, I do have a buy me a coffee link in the description, I believe, or in the pinned comment. You can just throw me a few dollars as a way to say thank you. And I do really appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.